Hi, I'm Michael Correa, and this is Psych Exam Review. In the previous video, we looked at different types of consciousness. So we compared different organisms, and we saw that they can have different levels of awareness of their environment or of themselves. And so we can classify those as different types of consciousness. And at the very top end of that spectrum, we had sort of the full, rich human experience of consciousness, which we consider to be the highest level of consciousness that we're aware of, or perhaps that we even could be aware of. So within that, there's different levels of access to information. It's not the case that we have the same high level of access to all information about the environment or about ourselves. There's different levels. And so that's what we're going to look at in this video. So the first level of consciousness would be information that we're conscious of. This is stuff that we are aware of, we can think about, right? we can sort of actively engage with this information. And a closely related level of awareness would be the pre-conscious level. So the pre-conscious refers to things that could be conscious if we choose to think about them. So they're things that can be brought to mind. Right? We're not currently thinking about them. They're not conscious at the moment, but they could be. So, for instance, if I were to ask you about a vacation that you took a year ago, you weren't thinking about it before I asked. It wasn't in your conscious mind before that, but as soon as I asked, you can bring it to mind very easily. So we consider that to be a pre-conscious type of information. Now, there's some information that you can't readily bring to mind, that you're not aware of at the time that you're doing something. But it still influences your behavior. And so this is what we call the subconscious. So the subconscious is something that you're not aware of, but it does influence your behavior. So you might be able to look back and say, okay, I wasn't aware of this at the time, but it was actually influencing my thought or it was influencing my behavior. And so that might be something that we would consider to be subconscious. Now, there's a bit of confusion here because this term is used interchangeably with another term. And this term is unconscious. So you'll often see uh, these, these terms used interchangeably, saying something is subconscious or saying something is unconscious, and they're meant to mean the same thing, meaning something that you're not aware of, but that influences your behavior. And so we'll see some examples of this in a future video when we talk about priming, when we talk about the mere exposure effect. So we can have uh, stimuli that influence us even though we're not aware of them. And we can say those are subconscious or we can say they're unconscious. But further confusion arises because the term unconscious can also be used to talk about some Freudian ideas. So we also have the Freudian unconscious. So the Freudian unconscious refers to repressed wishes, desires, and fears that are kept out of conscious awareness because they would cause anxiety. And most of the time when people talk about the unconscious, unless they're specifically talking about Freud or talking about psychodynamic theory in general, then they're probably referring to the subconscious. They're not really referring to this Freudian unconscious. And the Freudian unconscious is generally discredited today um, in terms of the type of unconscious influences that people mostly think about. Now, that said, I'm not trying to denigrate Freud too much. I think people do this. They, they lay a lot of criticism on Freud as, you know, his ideas being ridiculous or, or um, you know, that I've even heard other teachers say that perhaps we shouldn't learn about Freud at all. I mean, why do we even have to teach students about all these ideas that are wrong? Well, I think that's uh, not the most credible way of viewing Freud's contribution to psychology. I mean, his ideas really were revolutionary and completely changed how we think about the mind. I mean, before Freud, this idea that there could be things you're not aware of that influence you, I mean, people didn't think that way. And Freud helped to make that uh, the type of idea that now we take for granted. We just assume, oh, of course things can influence you without you being aware of them. I mean, that's a pretty big idea, and we should give Freud credit where he deserves it. The details, of course, uh, there's some disagreement, and you know, there's aspects of Freud's theory that are no longer considered to be valid. But that said, uh, we shouldn't completely dismiss Freud as an important figure in psychology. Okay, so the last level aware of awareness that we'll look at is the non-conscious. Okay, so what's the difference between saying that something is unconscious versus something is non-conscious? Well, when we say it's non-conscious, a good way to remember this, remember the N in non-conscious, and think of it as never aware. Or think of it as having no access. Right? So 
The non-conscious level refers to things that you cannot be aware of. Whereas the unconscious, we can look back and see the influence on behavior, and you know, even the Freudian unconscious sort of believe that you could uncover it, you could figure out what was going on in there. Whereas the non-conscious, it's like you can't figure it out. You don't have access to that information. So when it comes to something like controlling your heart rate, you know, or your digestion, or your liver function, I mean, you just simply can't do that. You can't be aware of what's happening in your liver at any time, no matter how hard you try to think about it. Right? The same would be true even for your body movements, right? You might say, oh, well, of course I'm aware of my body movements, but you're not really aware. I mean, you know how to move, but you don't really understand what's happening, and you, you can't really have access to, you know, specifically which neurons are firing or exactly how you're contracting different muscles. I mean, you just know I want to put my hand over here, and you just do it. But in terms of actually how that happens, what you're actually doing in your body to make that happen, you have no idea, and you really can't have any idea. It's non-conscious. You don't have access to that type of information. All right, so these are the different levels of access that we have to different types of information that we can categorize as conscious, pre-conscious, subconscious, or non-conscious. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.